so it's time for April favourites and today I'm going to do the usual. We're starting off in the bathroom so apologies for the audio, it will get better throughout the video. We're going to do some skincare bits in here, then also some beauty bits, some style bits and then I have a book recommendation and also a Netflix recommendation for you as well. Apologies if I'm a little bit like snappier than usual but I had coffee for the first time in like six months. I had an ice mocha, the weather is quite nice today. And I'm feeling all over the shop right now. <laughs> but my first favorite is this, and I'm like desperate to get it on my face because I've just cleansed. And you know when you just cleanse and your face is feeling a little bit like tight, I kind of need to put a bit of moisture on it because I've been trying to do this intro for like two and a half minutes <laughs> already. And it's from Herbivore. It's just recently launched on Space NK Online and in a couple of their stores. And this is their Rose Hibiscus Coconut Water Hydrating Face Mist. And face mists were something that I was really into a couple of years ago. I'd like keep them out of my desk and spray my face with them. But as I've moved into the Kiehl's Iris Extract Activating Treatment Essence, which is more something that you put on your hands and like splash on your face. By the way, got the second to last one in the Brighton store. Thank you for all of your tips. It's definitely a little bit easier to find now. And that this is great. Like I just hadn't used a spray for a really long time. Oh, yeah, that was quite a lot. And but it leaves your skin so glow <coughs> so glowy and i'm really enjoying like putting it on after cleansing either in the morning or the evening sometimes i use that sometimes i use this but i feel like where it really comes into its own is you know just during the day you like look in the mirror you're like oh my skin's looking a little bit flaky a little bit dry a little bit dehydrated even though you've been on your water consumption it's really high like sometimes i find that just my skin at the moment is like drinking up makeup and just looking a little bit more parched than normal that is great for like a skincare snack. I saw Into the Gloss talk about skincare snacks this past month and I was like, that is so genius. That is what it's really good for. So like keeping a bag, keep on your desk and just like put on just when you need a little bit of extra oomph, like even over your makeup, that is great. Let me do a little bit more of my skincare routine and I'll be back with my next favorite. Don't worry, the redness goes down, but I've hydrated a little bit more and I feel like now is the time to talk about this. This is from Isle of Paradise and these are their self tanning drops for face and body in the medium shade. There you go, they look a little something like this. It's actually really hard to get the bottle open which isn't necessarily a bad thing. So I bought these from Boots because I saw Kate Levy talk about them so highly and absolutely love the brand. I bought these tanning drops and I also bought the tanning water as well and I have to say the tanning water which is like a spray that you put along your body just didn't work out for me. It's got zero guide colour in it and I feel like I'm all right at tanning. I'm not the best, I'm not the worst and I ended up with streaks. I ended up like not rubbing it in properly because I just couldn't see where I'd applied it. So for me the tanning water wasn't the one. However the drops I really like. The reason why I've used such a small amount is because you barely need any. I think on the back it says 1 to 12 drops. I haven't used this on my body but I have used it on my face. I do like a bit of facial self tanning and I normally use this from Clarins. This is their liquid bronze self tanning. You can see I love it. That's like my fifth bottle of the stuff. That's more of a lotion which is great. I just apply it as like the final step of my skincare routine. But this I enjoy because it's droplets that you add into like a moisturizer or an oil. So it's very easy to incorporate into your routine. But let me tell you, if you go over like this one with my skin tone, if you go over kind of the four or five drop mark, oh my word, come the morning I'm like, okay, I think I went a little bit too overboard. So I definitely say experiment with how many drops you need. You, you won't need 12 for your face, I wouldn't reckon. I'm not gonna put any on my face right now because I feel like I'm kind of okay with where my uh, faux glow is at. Also, do not apply this without a moisturizer. Holy cow, <laughs> like I got a little bit like on the side of my hand one day and there was like an orange splodge there. So be very careful, wash your hands afterwards and don't put it on without some kind of like oil or moisturizer or something out to like dilute it. I know I've spoken about this before, but I really just want to hammer home. I absolutely love this oil and actually this month I repurchased it which was painful but it was payday and I was like it's time I'm gonna do it and it is the May Lindstrom Skin the Youth Dew. I feel like I mentioned this like two favourites ago so I won't go on about it too much but it's at that point it makes a funny noise. Oh. <laughs> and so I finally repurchased it. They actually had it on Content Wellbeing. I've never ordered anything off there before but it came really quickly they have really good discount codes on there. You can always get like 10% off, but it's not applicable on May Lindstrom, which is just so gutting. But I had like a May Lindstrom moment. I repurchased that. 
I got myself the Honey Mud, um, which I've never tried before. Uh, it's a gentle enzyme cleanse and mask. And I used this as a mask the other day and my skin was dreamy after it was like really soft. And I've been having a bit of like a breakout here and it really helped with that. And that reminded me that I had this in my stock. This is the Problem Solver, which is like a kind of dusty thing. And you like mix water in with it. <laughs> the funny thing was, is you have to like mix it up in a little pot. And I did that the other day and like left it in the sink and Mark thought it was leftover pesto and almost went to dip his finger in and be like, mmm, pesto. Thank God he realised it wasn't that. Um, but honestly, I know my Lindstrom is super pricey, like that was not cheap, especially when I bought it with that as well. Um, but it truly is one of my favourite parts of my skincare routine. And it just adds such a gorgeous glow. So I'm kind of halfway there with my makeup already. Um, I'll make sure that everything is in the description box below if you want to see what I've slapped on already. But I thought I would show you my three favourites from the past month. Because um, I have a highlighter, a mascara and an eyeshadow. First thing, the highlighter. This is from Hourglass and this is their Vanish Highlighting Stick in the shade Champagne Flash. I'll show you mine. It's a little bit uh, battered. It comes like their Vanish Foundation Sticks. Um, and I first tried these as part of a job I did with Space NK and Lily was like, I don't think they're going to be for you. I think they're going to be a bit full on and they do come in five different shades. It's like a pinky one, a bronzy one. This is sort of the yellowy gold one. Um, so there's going to be one that fits for your skin tone because they kind of all have a different undertone to them. Um, but actually I do really like this. I don't like it applied to the skin and then blended in. I find that that's just too much for me. I kind of apply it how I apply the um the glossier one which actually i now house in this little pot look at that that's my halo scope um because i got to the bottom like no more was coming out and it turns out there's an absolute load in there and um, so if you got to the bottom like get a little teaspoon or like tweezers or something like that you can get out a good another like two three months of usage out of there so keep that in the pot um and i really think the difference between these two is this is just a little bit more full on it's a little bit more i don't want to say metallic-y on the cheek because i feel like that is off-putting um but i feel like it's just a bit more of like a summer glow like that's good year round this is when you just want a little bit more of a like i've been on holiday sheen and then i just basically pat this in like where i would apply a highlighter and i feel like it just gives a little bit of glow i really like it i'm not sure you can particularly see the difference there um but yeah i find it's a very subtly golden glow Ooh. right let's move on to eyeshadow and this is basically the only eyeshadow that i've worn all month if you've like watched a video with me in it i've been wearing this eyeshadow it's from chanel and this isn't one of their you know they do their like little cream eyeshadows and they're called like illusion de homme or something this is called an ombre premiere cream eyeshadow it's slightly different it's not as like moussey feeling it's more of a creamy texture this is in the shade 820 memory you can see i've made a proper dip in that and it's just a gorgeous bronze it's like the perfect summer bronze um if i'm in a bit of a pinch i just stick my finger in it and sort of smudge it all over the eye but i use something like the mac 242 brush just to like get it on my actual lid on it goes and it's just such a good color i'll come a bit closer so you can see like a warm golden summery bronze i put it on really messily i'm just trying to sort of get it on the actual lid and then i would either take like my finger or oh, i love this brush the zoeva Lux crease brush i just sort of blend out the edges and it's got a shimmer in it but it's not glitter it's a very fine shimmer that just looks very glossy on the lids like this is the effect that i thought the glossier lid stars would have um, so many people have asked me about those and I have mentioned them in a video before and they just weren't for me. I found them way too glittery. But this just gives like a nice sheen on your eye without being too much. Let's talk about mascara because I actually have quite a lot to say about mascara this month. I have found so <laughs> many mascaras. If you watched my new in beauty like tested kind of first impression slash two week review video, I'll link it up here for you. Um, I think I mentioned three mascaras in that and I have, um, actually I think I mentioned this one before so there's two more to talk about. Um, the one that is my favourite of the month that I'm going to throw on today and show you is the Estee Lauder Little Black Primer um, which I mentioned in that video is such a good mascara if you love that like no mascara look. It's very fluttery, it's very natural 
sure it holds a curl really well, doesn't flake, doesn't smudge. It's almost like a set of very natural lash extensions. In a way, it just looks fluffy on the eyes and that I'm super into. However, there are two new waterproof formulas this month, which I have given a go only for a couple of days. So I don't wanna throw these in as an official favorite, more just if you like waterproof mascara like I do. Sorry, the sun is doing that thing again, go away. I know there's quite a few of you out there that we have like similar mascara tastes and I love a good waterproof formula. This is waterproof by the way. And I've been waiting for these two formulas to come out and they always come out like just before summer. So I'm like, yes, now is the time for us. It is the L'Oreal Paradise Ecstatic. Um, people have been going crazy about this mascara. It normally comes in like a rose goldy tube. And I just wasn't crazy about the original formula. It was nice, but obviously it didn't hold a curl. It just wasn't for me. This is on like a big fluffy brush. Um, but I really like it. Like I said, only use it for a couple of days. So maybe it'll be in my next favorites, but it's a good choice from the drugstore. And then this I found in my local boots. And um, I've had a couple of DMs today because it just popped up on Instagram stories. And apparently it's a boots exclusive in the UK. Um, but I picked up this and the miniature. It's not with me here. It's in my travel stuff. But I picked up a little miniature. It's adorable. I think the miniature was about £13. This was about £21, I think. But this is the Lancome Monsieur Big Waterproof Mascara. And again, big old brush, really chunky, really big. I did, again, make a bit of a mess with it um, when I did put it on, but I really liked it. Like, I'm not sure I had a line of lashes, but I was definitely like 50% of the way there really good definitely more dramatic than the Estee Lauder but I thought I'd just show you the Estee Lauder on because it's just a glorious mascara if you're not just wanting to have like quite a natural day there you go hopefully you can see it. it's just like gives a little bit of lift a little bit of separation but not a crazy amount of volume so you're kind of every day if Glossier did mascaras I feel like it would be a bit like this right let's go have a look at the wardrobe apologies for like the dark tint over the rest of this video I've only just realized um that I had all of my blinds closed instead of just the one that I thought I had closed. I don't know how I didn't realize that, but let's talk about clothing. Actually, I'm gonna duck down here because probably my favorite clothing piece of the month has to be these little slippers, which Mark just laughs at whenever I wear them. He's like, your little woven slippers, they're so silly. They're so comfortable. They're from Sam Edelman. I picked them up in my spring capture wardrobe haul, I think it was. I got them off net a day and they are just, they're perfect. They're like such a good slip on shoe where your toes don't show. And here are my little slippers, as Mark calls them. Um, I think I've got these in a six. I normally wear a six. I did also pick these up in the six and a half and they were just a little bit too big, a little bit too flappy. This bit does sort of stretch, I guess, because you're kind of flip-flopping around. So I'd pick these up in your normal size. Um, these are in a six, so you can see my heel is still on the back. It's not like falling off the back at all. Um, but yeah, I just think they sort of make every outfit look a little bit more springy. My final star favorite that I want to show you is this. This is from Kitchery, and this is one of their jumpsuits. It's not going to do it justice on the hanger, so I'll put in a little clip after this. Um, but it was what I wore in my Home Sense video, and I just absolutely love it. In fact, I'm really into this brand, and um, I'll link it down below for you. They've got some really cool things in there. They're like a little bit like whistlesy price wise, and they're quite capsule. They haven't got like a huge, huge range available online. I think they actually now have a concession inside Selfridges, which I really want to visit, but it's just a very cool, interesting brand, like basics with a twist. If you're into like that kind of vibe, definitely check them out. From this jumpsuit, I get kind of like mechanic slash bandanas in pajamas sort of vibe. I just think it's cut in a very flattering way. The vertical lines just do amazing things, especially if you've got a bit of a pouch going on. I mean, I have just come back from being on holiday for a week, but I feel like this just sort of skims over it and then really cinches you in in the waist, which is lovely. And it's got pockets and the length is really good on me. I'm five foot seven just for reference. Just overall a really lovely piece. I think I've got this in the size 10. Fits really well, um, nice on the butt, like not too baggy. I like that it hasn't got any elastic around the back. It does mean you have to go for like the right fit for you. Um, but I just think it's sort of a classier look without any elastic in it and it being a bit more fitted. I'm gonna call the final category like media this month because I've got a book and also a TV program to mention. The book that I finished up right at the beginning of the month actually was A Little Life by Hanya Yangarihara. 
I think that's how you say it. Completely butchered that, but she's an amazing writer. Um, this was recommended so highly. I'd seen other people on Instagram reading it. And then what like pushed me over the edge, I'm not gonna lie, to read this book, was obviously I'm obsessed with Queer Eye. Anthony is obsessed with this book. And he actually wore in two episodes a t-shirt that had the names of the main characters on it. So I kind of was like, oh, what's that t-shirt about? Googled it, found that it's the characters of these books, picked up the book. And then finally, finally it arrived. I was like, oh, that book was a little bit beefier than I thought it would be. It's like 720 pages. It's huge. And had I not had a flight to Vietnam and back, I'm just not sure I ever would have got through this book. But instead, that 12 hour flight, all I did was read and sleep. I didn't even watch any films. I didn't do anything else. And actually having that like stint to read it, this is why it's probably quite a good like holiday book when you can relax and you have the time because the text is very small too. It made me realize I really need to go for an eye test. Um, it's beefy and so you need to have those like long periods of time to actually get into it. I wasn't into this until I went away and was able to do that. When I was just like trying to read like a chapter a night, which you can't do because the chapters are like this big. Um, I just wasn't super into it. And by the end of the book, I do think it was a glorious book. Um, I would definitely say like trigger warning, there's a lot of self-harm, there's a lot of eating disorder stuff in here. It's quite intense, it's a very intense read. Um, if that's not your thing, don't go for it. And it was just quite full on, it was like an emotional roller coaster. Um, but when I got to the end I was like, holy cow, that is a very amazing story and I'm really pleased that I read it. Um, but yeah, I just kind of want to throw out that it's, it's quite full on and probably one to read when you do have those large pockets of time. It's not like a nightly read on your nightstand, it will take you ages to get through this. I'm currently reading the new Jojo Moyes book which is called Still Me and I have to admit, it's not, it's not grabbing me as much as um, Me Before You, which was the first one, and then Me Before You, Me After You, that's it. I've read all of them. This one isn't grabbing me as much as the others. I'm kind of just getting through it. I have a feeling that Nora Ephron Heartburn is gonna be my next book. Um, I listen to The High Low, it's like my favorite podcast, and I know that Dolly Alderton is a huge fan, and Pandora Sykes has been reading it and absolutely loving it, so I think I might make an order off of Amazon for that. And But after that, it kind of comes to the end of my book recommendations. So if you have any for me, pop them down in the comments. I would love to see those. And then for TV stuff, I'm sorry Lily, I haven't got around to watching This Is Us yet. Like bully me in the comments down below, like I promise I will get onto it. Lily was like, I want you to watch This Is Us so it can be in your April favourites. I just, we still haven't got around to it, but we did watch um, The Defiant Ones, which was a documentary on Netflix. I have a feeling it's up there for a limited time, um, in the UK anyway, so if you wanna watch it, you kinda have to be snappy about it. A friend recommended it and said that it was the best documentary that he's like watched in years, and it was awesome. It's a documentary about Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine, who are the co-founders of Beats. And Jimmy Iovine is like a music producer, Dr. Dre, you've heard of him. And it's sort of like how they met, their stories, their early lives, like how they both got into the music industry. And it was so good. As someone who like seriously, seriously loves like 90s, early 2000s, like hip hop, R&B, rap, that kind of stuff. It was so interesting. I watched a Notorious B.I.G. documentary on the way back from New Zealand and that was awesome too. If I can remember the name of it, I'll link it down below for you. But it's kind of interesting to see like both of those, because it's like the East Side, West Side thing, like to see how they both overlapped and sort of discuss that moment in music history was just so interesting. And the talking head sections, you know, where they like interview other people, are just like out of this world. You're like, oh my God, Stevie Nicks, oh my God, Snoop Dogg, oh my God, Gwen Stefani, oh my God, Eminem, it's just, and the way they've edited it as well is so good, it's in four parts, and um, some of the parts are quite meaty, like over an hour, um, but it's well worth it, you're gonna wanna binge watch, it was great. But that is it for the month of April, and um, I did wanna say thank you so much for all of your support with the sponsored videos that I've had going up this month. I did say it was like buses, they kind of, they've all come at the same time, but I really, really appreciate your support and your lovely comments under that. But as I'm away this week, I've done a bit of cheeky pre-filming, and there's gonna be a makeup declutter video coming your way, oh my word. <laughs> on Sunday, next weekend. So I really hope you like that. There's always blog posts to keep you updated, so look out for those. Instagram, Instagram stories, all that kind of stuff. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.